Hello everyone. Uh, this talk is called Drupal 8 Multilingual APIs Building for the Entire World. So as you may get from the title, we are talking about code, not uh, about site building. If you are interested on site building capabilities in multilingual websites in Drupal 8, you can check on Drupal 8 Multilingual.org where we have, uh, we have been doing uh, a lot of sessions in the past two years about site building. So you can find some recordings there, even a, a three hours workshop that you can follow to learn more about set building. But this is, uh, you can also find a multilingual demo distribution that you can for checking the capabilities, but this talk is not about set building, but about code. Uh, my name is Christian Lopez. Uh, I'm Peñasquito on Drupal.org and I've been one of the Drupal 8 multilingual uh, initiative contributors. But uh, this is not, uh, this is a work, what we, I'm presenting here is a work of a, a lot of people. So we should be really thankful to all of them that participated in the multilingual initiative. There are more than 1,500 contributors that uh, contributed reviews, user testing, screenshots, code, uh, tests, uh, any kind of feedback that made this possible. So please thank, thank them all. Uh, so in Drupal 7, uh, multilingual was an afterthought. And in, for Drupal 8, there was a proper, there, there was something new that was called initiatives and there was a proper multilingual initiative that worked since the kickoff of Drupal 8 development on making multilingual sites uh, easier to build. Uh, so we are going to see a bit about how you would make a Drupal 7 multilingual websites and how this changed in Drupal 8. So, uh, in Drupal 7, if you wanted to build a multilingual website, you, you install Drupal core and you find that there's nothing related to languages, but there's a module that it's not enabled by default, which is the locale module. And the locale module allows you to translate your interface, adding languages, and you can work with PO files. You can download PO files from localizedrupal.org and import them on your site. And this is something that you have to do for every module, uh, for every language. So if you have uh, four languages and 10 modules, 10 contributed modules, you need to download 40 PO files and import them manually. And this is a tedious task. So you would install the localization update module, which allows you to do this uh, automatically. This is a country module, not in core. And then you want to also translate your notes. And for that, you install the content translation module, which uh, creates copies of your notes. So you have a note in English and you want to uh, translate it to Czech. You need to, to, in, to create a, it, it will create a copy of this note for the Czech translation. And then this node may have uh, taxonomies and you want to translate your taxonomy. So you need the IATN suite, which provides a module for IATN terms for translating your taxonomy terms. And then you want to translate your site name and your slogan on your site and you need the variable module for that. And then if you are building a commerce uh, website, you would need the entity translation for translating your products. And the entity translation can translate your products, but not the titles. So you even need another new uh, model, which is the title model. So this is uh, how you end up easily with uh, a lot of uh, country models, like 40 or, or 50, only for making your website multilingual. And in, uh, there are several uh, set of configurations that you can, uh, you can make the same with different choices. So you can translate your terms with the entity translation module or you can use the IA 18 terms. So you have like several options and it can be quite complex uh, easily. So in Drupal 8, uh, multilingual websites were uh, thought from the beginning and we wanted to make this 
process easier. And for that, uh, there was, this was divided into four pillars. The first one is the language uh, module, which provides base services for dealing with your language and dealing with which data, which language your data is in. And even if you have a monolingual website, uh, it's, it's really useful for tracking the language your data is in if you want later to add new languages. Uh, the second pillar is the interface translation module. In Drupal 7, we had the locale module, which had the languages and also the interface translations. In Drupal 8, this is uh, in a different module, so you can have a site where you want to have different languages, but maybe you don't want to translate your interface. Uh, and this interface module, interface module provides uh, the ability of translating your interface, but also includes the ability of automatically downloading your translations from localized Drupal.org. So you don't need uh, the localization update module anymore. It's already built in co into core. And it, it improved a lot the usability of how you translate your, your Drupal site. Uh, then there's a third one, which is the content translation uh, module, which uh, allows you to to translate your content. Uh, this is based, uh, it's called content translation, but it's based on what entity translation would look like on Drupal 7. So you are actually having only one, if you're translating your notes with content translation, you will only have one node, and each translation is not creating a different uh, copy of this node, but you would be actually translating fields. And content translation model provides a user interface for translating your content in, in Drupal 8. And then the fourth one is the config translation. In Drupal 7, uh, config configuration was mostly saved on strings, variables. Uh, in Drupal 8, we have a complex uh, config system that uh, allows a lot of different scenarios, like, and you can actually uh, export your configuration, import it, import it. You have uh, ty you have typed data uh, enabled, so you know which uh, types your configuration is in. And the config translation model allows you to to translate this configuration and provides a unified translation interface for that. So you can actually translate your views or your blogs with Drupal Core. So I'm going, as I said, if you want to know more about the site building parts of it, you can check these videos on Drupal 8 multilingual.org. But I'm going to cover APIs from the different uh, four pillars we have. So in terms of language, let's see what APIs they provide. So in Drupal 8, we have a new object-oriented paradigm, and we have something called services, which uh, which provides objects that you can, uh, has methods that you can use for, and you have the Drupal Language Manager service. And the Drupal Language Manager call will uh, return a language manager where you can uh, make any operation you can think of on your languages. And it, this is provided by core without uh, the language module enabled. So this is a, a feature that you have in core. You need to know about the languages even if you only have English as a language. And if you install the language module, you will get a different object, which is a configurable language manager, which uh, has a, a common interface. So if you are dealing with this from your module, you don't really need to know if you are in a multilingual website or not. You just uh, call this uh, service and you will get the proper uh, language manager that it's installed on the system. And in your language manager, you can call the get languages method. And in Drupal 7, we had a special language, which, which was the not, a specif the not a specified language. And this was a bit confusing for developers. So we added another one to double the confusion. And now we have the not specified language, but also the not applicable language. So the use case for this is that you may have uh, data that you don't know in which language is it. 
so you would use the not specified because you don't know it. Uh, but there are other cases where you actually don't need a, a language. So maybe you are saving an image, a picture, and this picture has no text on it, so you don't really need to know the language, and you would use the not applicable language instead of the not specified language. And if you call the get languages method without the language module installed, you will get these three languages. So will, you will get the two special languages and the English, which is the default. If you have the language module installed and you add uh, different languages, uh, you can actually get those languages. And these languages are configuration, so you can actually export them or uh, stage them to different environments and they are exported as YAML files, as any other config entity in Drupal 8. And if you see the difference between the two different set of languages, you would see that the special languages has a locked uh, attribute. So when you, in your user interface, when you are selecting the languages, sometimes you won't see those if they don't make sense to, to be displayed. So they are special. Actually, special. And uh, well, and your languages, you can edit, you can do whatever you want with your with your uh, custom languages, because they are not locked. Uh, if you Drupal uh, includes 95 standard languages, you can pick from. So if you want to add a new language to your site, you can create them from the LAN code and you would get these standard languages with uh, creating from LAN code FR will create French on your system after you save it and it will have the proper label, it will, be, it will know that it's uh, left to right, anything. If you want to create your custom languages with your custom LAN code or because maybe you are using different locales, uh, you can just call the configurable language constructor and save that, the object that you get from there as with any other config entity. So when you have uh, your language objects, you can perform any CRUD operations on them, you can read them, you can uh, edit them, you can load them or de delete them through the APIs. And another thing that the language models uh, do is that it detects the language you are using on your interface. So it knows how to negotiate languages. You can configure uh, language negotiations, so you can do something based on a prefix or a domain. And from the APIs, you would have this uh, language manager get current language for getting the language that is actually negotiated. So you don't really need to know uh, the, lang the language negotiation settings. You only need to, to get the current language and you know which language you are, you are going to use and this will return the, the language object. So this is about the language module. The next one is the interface module. Uh, now that you have your languages on your side, you may need to translate your, your uh, user interface text uh, to those languages. If you remember in Drupal 7, we had the magic T function where you wrap everything there and it will return the translation. So in Drupal 8, it's apparently the same. Uh, and if you are using these APIs in 99% of the cases, you just call T as you did in Drupal 7. But internally, there are a lot of difference that allow us to do a lot of new things. <coughs> so before, uh, before talking about how you should properly use T, I need to introduce the concept of dependency injection, which, how many of you are already aware of dependency injection? Yeah, half of the room. So in your Drupal 7 code, if you are building your logic of your page and you have to deal with which user you are, uh, is visiting the site and you want to translate your your, your text on this page, you will need to, to get the user, call a global method that will return the user, and then you need to check the configuration for this user, which language he prefers, 
and which languages are available and then call the proper translation uh, methods for translating your data. In Drupal 8 we have the concept of dependency injection. Instead of doing these uh, calls to different systems, what we do is that in our components we get these ex external uh, services, uh, these external objects that allow us to uh, ask the system uh, about your users, your configuration, or your translation. And instead of having to call someone else, you get these objects and you can uh, actually call them on your own context. And this uh, allows us to swap the different services. So if you have a if you have like a, you want to integrate with external uh, user, uh, an external system that is providing your users, you need to implement a service implementing the same interface and you don't really need to change anything in this code if you already have, uh, uh, if you already define which methods you can call on, the, on these services, you don't really need to know if it's using external system or not, you just call get users and you get the users. So what we are going to, to do here in some way is reversing the arrows. Our logic don't need to call external data, so we get these uh, external methods, but we get these external methods and make them internal. So in this way, we will have injected the translation services. So you don't really need to call T, but instead you will call this T. And if, you are, if your code is extending from uh, form base or controller base, uh, you will get this T method for free. If you are creating your own class that doesn't extend from anywhere, you can use a trait, the string translation trait, and this provides the, the T method and the uh, translation services uh, reference, so you can call this T without having to do anything else. And <coughs> calling this T, then instead of calling T, you will call this T and you pass the string as you used to and you can pass a context uh, or options uh, to the T method. And as you see here, you, will, you don't get the translated string, but you get a, a actually translation uh, wrapper that it's an object that you can call methods on. So you can call the get option method and get, if you pass a line code, you can get the option later on. So in some way, what we are doing here is we are deferring the translation itself. So in Drupal 7, you had the T method, but in the installation, uh, you had a different method because the translation system was not available. In this case, if you are deferring all the translations, you can actually have only one method T. And, uh, and as this uh, is deferring the translation itself, if you are altering your, maybe you have a string defined on your form and then you are altering it in a form alter and you are re removing this, ref this string from the interface, this won't really call the translation method on it, so in some ways it's also better for performance. So if you are not rendering the final HTML, the string in the final HTML, you don't really translate your strings. Uh, as with the T method, in, we had the format plural method. This is actually deleted from Drupal 8, so in Drupal 8 you can still call T, even if it's not the best method for the best recommended way. But about format plural, it was actually removed, so you have to call this format plural, and this is also provided by the string translation thread. So, is and it will return an object as T does, so you can do the same with this. And if you are using JavaScript for translation, this didn't change much from Drupal 7. You call Drupal T or Drupal format plural in the same way. About your templates, uh, in Drupal 7 we, we had the PHP template system and you, had, uh, you could call t, the t function methods. In Drupal 8, 
we have a tweak, uh, the tweak templating system, and you may have uh, your some interface uh, strings there. So for translating those, we have uh, uh, we have two different ways. First one is uh, the trans filter, so you can actually pass a string to the trans filter as in the top, and you will get a translation. Or you can actually use the trans uh, the trans tag as in the bottom there, and this will call the t function for you. Uh, the first one is. Uh, is shorter, so you can use it for if you are translating a single string. But if you are providing a context, like you may want to actually specify which language you want to translate this string to, or you want to pass any other context to the T function, uh, you can use the trans tag, which is more readable. Uh, in Drupal 7, you have the hook menu where you define your, the title of your links. Uh, in Drupal 8, we have this in YAML files. So you don't, and, and in Drupal 7, you, you shouldn't uh, translate your strings there because these strings were cached. So you don't call the T function there. And the Drupal system will, do, will translate your links for you. In Drupal 8, it's the same, but we actually have YAML files. So what we have here is that we have uh, special uh, attributes like title or the description. And the system and the, the POTX uh, system will actually extract those translations. So you can, the, it will call T for you. So your menu links or your menu actions are translatable too. So in summary, the interface translation module allows you to, you still define your strings in code in English, but it allows you to translate to any other language. Next pillar is the content translation. And, and as we said, it's not based on creating copies of nodes, but it's actually translation are saved in the same nodes by using field translation. <coughs> So if you are defining your, your own content entities, as, uh, and this is a snippet from Node.php, what we do here is that we create annotations in our class. So we will have a, a class extending from the content entity base class. And there you can add your annotation where you define the metadata of your entity, like the ID is node. And here you define if your content entity can be translatable or not by the translatable uh, key. You can say translatable true, and that makes your entity translatable. And the only thing you need to define is that you have to define a land code field in your, in your, in your content entity. And, for doing, and you have to include the, that land code key, that land code field uh, name to the entity keys uh, land code uh, key. And if you are extending from the content uh, entity base, you can see uh, that in the base field definitions, if you define this key land code, it will create the field for you already. You can override it if you want, but you can just use the default field for that. So when you implement your, your entity, and you provide the base field definitions method for, for creating your base field definitions. If you actually use uh, call the parent uh, method, you will have the language uh, itself. And if you are defining your own fields and you want them to be translated, you want uh, the users, the site builders of your site, to be able of making them translatable, you just define the set translatable method. And this will provide them the option in content language settings to, to actually translate them. So what you do with this is you are not marking them as translatable, but you are giving the site builder the option to make them translatable. And if you are defining, you are creating your own fields, uh, 
in most cases, you don't really need to do anything. So Drupal 8 uh, takes care of them and they will be translatable. They, they will be translatable by default. <coughs> and the, the site builders can configure them on the UI. If you want to have more granular detail about this, so maybe you have like this example from Drupal 8 core is the image field. So the image field has a file, it has the alternative text and it has a title. And you may want to provide the users the capability of making some subfields translatable, but not everything. So you can define groups for that. And in your field annotation, your field type annotation, you can define the column groups. And you can define the field, which will be composed by the target ID with and height columns. And then you have the alternative text. And then you can say uh, that this alternative text will be translatable by default. So what you do here is that in the content language settings, when you have uh, an image field, you can actually configure if you want to translate the file or not, if you want to translate the alternative text or not, or the title or not. Uh, so you don't really translate the, the full field, but some parts of it. And for using the, the entity API, you can actually load your nodes with the node load method. And you will get a, a proper node object. And this object has uh, methods that deal with the translations themselves. So you can call the get translation and pass a LAN code and you will get the translation on, of this node. Or you can, uh, if you don't actually know which language you, you want to get, like you are maybe getting the negotiated language, you have a get translation from context in the entity repository class, so you can you will get the proper negotiated language translation for this uh, node. And there are different methods that you can call. You can get the original and uh, translated uh, node. You can get the language object from your node or which languages this node has been translated to. If there is uh, an existing translation or not, you can add translation, remove translation. Uh, you can do anything with the translations of your nodes. So as you see, this is a really um, a complete API that you can use on your, on your site. But actually, thanks to the diff integration with uh, the entity APIs, the entity system and the languages system, you can, and views now it's in core, so you can actually do a lot with views, so you may not even need to, to use the APIs at all. Uh, views, as you may know, views, uh, it's, a util, it's, a, it's a module that provides you the ability to query the system and display the date, this data on a page or a block or wherever, so you can actually filter, so you have filters for the languages, and you, for, altering the queries based on the language and you can actually render it in a different language. So it's a really, uh, it's really easy to build anything with views now. So you can filter uh, the check nodes in your system and then those, uh, then display those nodes in German. So you can do really complex systems just using views. So in summary, the content translation module allows to translate uh, from any language to any other language on the system. And you have intelligent objects that you can actually uh, perform operations on. And the fourth uh, system, the four pillar is the config translation system. In Drupal 8, there are dif two different kinds of configuration, configuration objects and configuration entities. Configuration objects is when you have only one instance on, of your configuration. For example, the system maintenance uh, configuration is an object. And there you have, uh, you define the language of this configuration itself with the LAN code attribute. And you have 
something called config schemas, where you define which uh, type, type of data you have these strings on. So if you have a config object defines a LAN code, so any configuration will have a LAN code. And if you use a text, um, if, if you use a text uh, property, this will make them translatable. So if you define your schemas for your own config objects, you will get uh, the config, transla config translation interface for free, so you can translate all your config. This is another example is the system schema. You will have, uh, in the system schema, you have the system maintenance attribute and you define that this is a config object and you define that the message is a text, so this will make it a translatable string. So, you will have the system maintenance YAML defining the message of the maintenance when your system is in maintenance mode and if you translate this to Hungarian, you will have a different, if you export this, you will have a different folder for languages, which will be languages, hang, the LAN code of Hungarian, and then system maintenance YAML. And this will overwrite these, uh, these uh, strings for the language you are translating to. So you will have the, the same message in, in Hungarian. And the same for any language you have on the system. So how do you call these APIs? So there's a, a Drupal config method for getting your configuration. And from this configuration object, you can call the get uh, method for getting the, the property values. And when you call the Drupal config, uh, the overrides are applied, so if you are in a Hungarian context and you call the get message to this object, you will get the Hungarian text for it. But there are, uh, ta there are other uh, times where you may want to get a different language. So maybe you, you are visiting your site in on, on Czech, but you want to send message to the user to different users and the users have defined their default language that they want their mail sent to in Spanish. So you can actually get, in this case we are getting language Hungarian and we are, we are getting the get config override language. So we know which language we are overriding there and we can set our own config lang override language, then call the config uh, system and we will get the configuration in this language that we have overridden. Uh, we can make whatever operations we want here and then we can set the config override language back to the original one. So this is uh, how you deal with configuration uh, with overrides, but there are other cases that you want no overrides applying. So you can for example, if you are defining your, your configuration forms, you will use the config factory get ready table and pass the config uh, ID string and this will return the object, the configuration object with no overrides applying. Or you can uh, define the override itself calling the language manager get language config override. <laughs> you pass the language code and the configuration ID and this will return the, the override itself. So conf uh, in the case of entities, like we have really clever objects that you can call methods on, configuration is more like uh, you are getting a, an array of data and you have to actually deal with the override yourself. So it's not as intelligent as the, as the entity API system. So, uh, summarizing for config, uh, you can translate from any language to any other language and you don't really get uh, very intelligent objects. It's like dummarize that you can override like applying other configuration on top of it. Uh, so, these, these were the four pillars of Drupal 8 and the APIs related. Again, thanks to the team behind this which is a very big one, more than 1,500 contributors contributed to it. 
And thanks to the, the Drupal 8 multilingual initiative lead, Gabor Hotzi for Akia. So this, I've, as you may know, uh, this works quite well. It's quite complete, but there are still some issues that need help. So please drop by by the sprints during the weekend, and maybe we can make this even better. So that was it. If there are any questions, I'm happy to, yeah. Can I ask uh, the first question? Wait, we have a mic. Oh. Thank you. Hi. A first question. Uh, is there, uh, in Drupal 8, is there transliteration for, uh, for automatic uh, machine names? Yeah. Or is there still the underscore only ASCII? So in, in Drupal 8, transliteration is in core now. So you don't really need a, an, an external module for that anymore. Yeah, so machine names like in views or field, uh, is there, is, are there transliterated? Yeah, so you can actually like, you could actually create a, a view in Russian using Cyrillic language for the title and it will be automatically converted to, nice, nice. to ASCII characters. And second question, uh, can I translate uh, other language uh, than English in T function? So for, so for code, you are assumed to use English in your, in your code. So you should be using the T. So when I'm creating, uh, on example, only check in Hungarian page, I still have to uh, write the strings in English. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how about the, the strings that are uh, being overridden by an end user? Uh, in Drupal Seven, we have the uh, string override module, and we can actually export those strings into a, a feature, or in, in Drupal 8 case, it would be a, a YAML file, I guess. But how? So, in for overriding strings, uh, you can actually in the. So, as I said, this is not a site building session. So, it's not about the actual site building. Uh, yeah. When we are dealing with with end user. Uh, a staging environment, mm -hmm. the user is actually translating a string, and w it, it needs to be stored somewhere, and yeah. I, I tried to find it, but so it's completely the, the, lost. Yeah, so your interface translations are safe in the database, actually, and uh, you can export them to PO files that you can actually manage in JIT or whatever, and you can define your own uh, how you want to deal them, like staging your your translations to different environments, so you can use that with Drupal Core exporting them to PO files. And there's another thing that when you are translating your 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 site, you can define uh, translations as customized, so you can customize your translations. So maybe you you want you can somehow block them. So if you download translate contributed translations from localizedrupal.org, this won't be uh, overridden. So I think this answers your question. You can so you can get the translations from the community, but you can actually may want to change some of them. So you can translate them and then mark them as customized. So if you update your translations because the community is constantly upgrading them, you won't get your strings uh, overridden. Yeah. And these are saved on the database. Yeah, I think I get it. <laughs> I will need to look into it because it's really complex uh, material. You have to export PO files and, and mark things. Well, we'll have to look into that. If you want, we can check it later. Together. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Thank you. Sure. More questions? So thank you everyone, enjoy the conference.